Good morning and welcome once again to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa for those who are just uh, joining us. Uh, news reports in the last 48 hours, of course, spoke about uh, violence in parts of Plateau State that led to the burning of up to 250 homes and the death also of dozens. Um, we've also got into speak a, a lot about uh, cases of insecurity across Nigeria, bandits who have started to tax uh, you know, citizens and, um, you know, just numerous very, very sad cases across the country. We're speaking this morning with uh, Yahuza Getso, who is a security expert, uh, to share his thoughts on what must be done, you know, by Nigeria to rid the country of these elements. Good morning, Mr. Getso. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, we, we, of course, don't seem to be, you know, in very, very good time security-wise across the country. It seems that there is certain elements that have, of course, been called bandits that become, uh, are becoming more daring. Every other day, we hear about incidents of violence and killings, murder, you know, arson and, and the likes taking place in parts of, my, of the country. Um, there's also been criticism for the way the Nigerian government has handled these issues. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we saw a bandit who was boasting and bragging of killing Nigerian soldiers. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's no reports of him being arrested yet. Mr. Getso, what do you think we are still getting wrong with regards to the fight against banditry? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, what we are... Um still having wrong is uh, itemized or as follows. One, the issue of leadership. The leadership in the country is doesn't seem to be serious, doesn't seem to be committed, doesn't seem to have political and administrative will, doesn't seem to be serious about the life of common man. Uh, as I have been saying, all those who are committing these crimes are in Nigeria. All those who are committing these activities in the Northwest, uh, North Central, are indigenous, are Nigerians. And um, everybody knows who they are and everybody knows where they are. Their locations are not hides. And um, this is something that can be uh, managed. Uh, if at all the government is really serious about it. Because looking at the system and the structure in the Northwest, for example, uh, what we have is that you have what is called Mewa, that is the white head. You have what is called uh, Degachi, that is the, 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 the village head. And you have what is called uh, Haki, that is the district head. And you have what is called Emia, and that is uh, that is the area. So between each area and each of this leadership, there is each and every one of them have a boundary, have a geographical location for which he or she is taken care of, and there is no uh, free space between one community and another. So and um, these guys are coming in hundreds using motorcycles. And um, these motorbikes are not uh, using air for their uh, uh, utilization. They are using fuel. They are using diesel. You have to service them. You have to uh, balance and gauge the, 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 the air in the tires, and so on and so forth. So, so who is doing that? You have what we call divisional police officers. You have what we call local security officers who are the representative of the uh, Director General of the DSS at each of the local governments. And you have outpost police stations, and you have other intelligence formations and other structures of immigration, custom, interform, uh, military formations, among others, especially when this activity started in all parts of the country. There were a number of uh, uh, formations, military formations, or joint tax force that have been organized and money in thousands by being spent. Uh, sometimes in 2014, 2015, uh, sorry, sorry, 2017, 2018, uh, Governor Nasser Ahmed Erofai and other governors of the Northwest 
all governors of the North West, including the governor of Niger State from the North Central, represented the governors of the North Central. They had a meeting. And then the disturbing issue was uh, cattle rustling. So 100 million was given by each of these states to the military for them to go and fight these uh, cattle rustlers. Unfortunately, rather than fighting the cattle rustlers, the outcome was bandatry and kidnapping activities in these locations. And um, a number of children were kidnapped especially the school children at Kankara, at Kagara, at Chengkibi, and other places. And these kids were brought back. There was negotiation. So who facilitated the negotiation? We have heard many times, uh, even though I have been disputing, the governors of uh, Kasana and that of uh, uh, Zamfara proclaiming, including sometimes the governor of Niger and the uh, governors of uh, Sokoto, uh, proclaiming that they have had dialogue with bandits. So if you have dialogue with bandits, why, how do you get access to them? Who is a contact person? Why can't you use a contact person to lead him? And why? What is the essence of government paying uh, 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 allowances to the traditional leaders at all level from the highest level to the down level, even though it is an allowances, not a salary? But to look to withstand it, why can't you buy bounds on that? So the question is, uh, when these guys were about to get uh, a, a, that is uh, anti-aircraft and other arms and ammunitions, a lot of arrests, we have made a lot of um, uh, strategic guidance and provided a lot of strategic information, intelligence information to the security formations and um, at the national level, at the state level, at the local government levels. But the question is, many have been apprehended, many have been arrested, but we have not yet seen one that has been charged to the court. Mr. Getso, yes. Get so, really, you have raised a lot of points, you know, in the past minute. You've talked about the challenge of leadership and the people who claim to negotiate, negotiate with bandits. How do they really get that access? And why are we not capitalizing on that access to actually make sure that these people, you know, get, you know, um, arrested and that the people who have been victims, you know, get justice for all of that. You've talked about, you know, allowance to local rulers and what those funds should actually be used for. Prosecution also, like you were just mentioning. Well, I want to use the plateau example that occurred on Saturday um, to ask you this question. We've seen time and time again when states and communities are attacked, um, community leaders go on to say that they had been trying to contact um, members of the police, of the, you know, the Nigerian army, but that they do not come until after that attack. Why do you think we continue to have you know, that complaint? It is still taking us back to the case of the leadership, passion, and patriotism. When I say leadership, I'm talking about the authority and the uh, leadership of the security formations. Because in most cases, in the investigations we conducted, and uh, from the interviews you, the people in the media, conducted, we have had those communities say that when they approach the military formation station in their locations, that there is attack at so 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 place, they will say that they are waiting for command from the top for them to do things. They cannot go and check them. That is one. And then when we look at the issue of the passion, uh, I have been saying that in the last 22 to, to 30 years, the recruitment of the security personnel haven't been in line with ethics and um, norms and values, as stated the uh, principles of what it's supposed to be, uh, simply because uh, of selfish, from the leaders, selfish from the traditional institutions, selfish from the political authorities and their politically uh, uh, political leaders and their elect, elected people, whereby a council, when a recruitment of the military or a DSS or custom or immigration or any of the security formation is to hold, what used to happen is the fact that uh, the, uh, each and every one, the district head will bring his list the chairman, local government chairman, will have his list. The commissioner from that lo local government will come have his list. Then the uh, military personnel also, each of the leadership, like uh, likewise in the police, likewise in the, in the DSS, likewise in the immigration, 
in the customer and all sorts of uh, things. So those who are applying are not those who are being recruited. So those who are being recruited don't have the interest and passion and they don't have the patriotism in, in, their, in their minds. Okay. What they want is just to be I'm a security personnel, they drag around, they go to their villages, they marry uh, young girls, and um, they, they, they strategically get money from all sorts, whatever, using whatever influence to build houses, to acquire unnecessary resources. Everybody knows that uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, security personnel who are in businesses that they are not supposed to be today. And all this issue of fighting corruption that we have been taking here and there, the corruption is being bridged. So we are using uh, this uh, mechanism of employing unpatriotic uh, elements into the security formations to breed a more corrupt, corruptly uh, uh, branded, newly branded individuals that are collating and collaborating mm -hmm. and even uh, generating resources from all our sources, uh, 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 registering companies and uh, using some of their uh, politically uh, biased or motiv motivated. Uh, in, in fact, they are even financing some of the political elites. Okay, Mr. Getso, <laughs> Mr. So Getso. This is really affecting the system. You, you have made three powerful points right now. You first talked about, you know, when I asked you to say, you know, these communities complain that they are being attacked and that they call security agencies and they don't come after the, you know, after the attack. You said that they say they're waiting for a command. What, what sort of command? A command to go ahead? And if that's the case, does that now justify when community leaders go ahead to say that, you know, these people are afraid, they don't want to get caught in the crossfire, and that's why they wait till after the attack? And uh, you also mentioned something that they might be colluding with these headers, um, criminal headers and bandits. Could you please expantiate that point? Well, I, I think uh, before you interrupt your expansion, we need to understand that this mandatory activity is not only being conducted by the highest men, but it is a syndicate. Why I say it is a syndicate, these guys are living in the forest and bushes. Uh, so if they are living in the forest uh, and uh, bushes, it means somebody somewhere else is providing them with information. Yeah. So those informers are the ones cultivating the process. And these informers are mostly uh, uh, inhabitants, are mostly citizens of those communities that are being attacked. And in most cases, you see them they are out of these communities uh, before it happens. So uh, if we look at this and uh, look at other issues, it is very clear that uh, the, the, there is, and also there were a number of times when police caught some of the military personnel, or sometimes military caught the the, 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 the civil defense or the DSS or the custom or one of the uh, uh, security personnel colliding and uh, uh, providing information or providing support or uh, coverage for these criminals to go to conduct their activities, or sometimes in some cases they are even. Uh, supporting them in terms of purchase of arms and other things. So it is in view of this, all this, uh, sometimes when you have that, they are said they are waiting for command. They are waiting for command from their next uh, level of authority. So that you know in the military uh, and uh, in, the, in the hierarchy of the security formation, you have what is called chain of command. So uh, I, I think if I get it very right, uh, it is this chain of command that I make a reference to. All right. Um, and it's, it's one of the things I was also going to ask, you know, the possibility of having in, in uh, informants inside, uh, you know, the security agencies with the DSS, with the army, with the police and, and, and whatnot. The possibility that these bandits also get information from certain elements that, you know, have infiltrated uh, our security uh, agencies. Um, so speak on that. And then second, um, you know, some of the things that you've mentioned, because, you know, at, at the point, you know, it, become, it becomes tiring having these conversations and going in circles, knowing exactly what needs to be done, but doesn't seem to be done. Um, some of the things that you've mentioned, do you think that they should bother somebody somewhere that we're not seeing results? Um, do you think that there should be somebody who is concerned that there is no actual results with the fight against banditry? Um, you mentioned, well, uh, you know, the recruitment process, the kind of people who feel, you know, the, you, who are recruited into these agencies aren't people who are patriotic enough to actually fight, you know, insurgency and all of that. 
So it's our biggest challenge, really, the fact that it doesn't seem to be bothering particular persons that we're not actually winning the war against insurgency. Because if we were, or if it did bother certain people, then some of these things would have been corrected over time. Well, I, I think we saw the, the leadership at the all level from the national level. Uh, I have been making reference to the government of uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari or the All Progressive Congress, the ruling party, that uh, they have not been doing enough and they have not been serious about the issue of insecurity, especially the mandatory in the uh, 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 northwest, north central, uh, and um, uh, some part of southwest and south south all over our areas where and part of even the northeast where this activity is being carried out by these criminals. Uh, because what is expected, uh, in many times we have seen since independence, since Nigeria's independence, there is no government that budgeted and uh, implemented its budget that seems to be realistic. The huge amount of money that is invested in terms of insecurity, uh, purchase of hardware, training, capacity building, and so on and so forth that is related to security than that of the government of Muhammad Wahid. But unfortunately, everything is getting worse. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, as I quoted, Nasser Muhammad, uh, Nasser Rafai of Kabul State mentioned that the seven governments of those Western states, including the representation from the North Central governors, uh, which were represented by the governor of Major State, who is the chairman of the North, uh, North Central uh, Governors Forum, and they contributed 100 million each state. To fight what? Cartelously. So who is who who are those cartelers? Are you trying to tell me that it is the same plan man that is taking the cow from the boot from the bush and taking it into the trucks and driving it to Lagos, uh, to Port Harcourt, to some part of north northwest, some part, part of northeast and some other parts that those those cattle that were rusted, who is driving them? Who are the machetes? Who is doing that? It means that it's a syndicate. So, but the person that is responsible for him or, or to, to look at the results and have a framework analysis for monitoring, tracking, and evaluating whether the inputs we are making is bringing resource. We are making a lot of in input of resources, financial and human capital, human resources. So, but are we getting results? If we are not getting results, I have been criticizing the government of Muhammad Bahadur that since the time when it comes, there is no single either rank and file or an officer that has been uh, 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 punished uh, in public or in the formation so that mm. that will serve as a deterrence. So a number of apprehension and a number of arrests have been made. Some traditional leaders were arrested, some traditional leaders were, were vindicated, uh, uh, and um, some individuals in the government and in the security formations were vindicated. Uh, having were uh, challenged, were apprehended, or were suspected to be part of those who are contributing. You invested a lot of money, you have given a lot of approval, but still a hundred of people are being killed every day. And there is no fueling station in the forest, there is no fueling station, there are no mechanics in the forest who are servicing these motorbikes. Where is the access of these arms and ammunition and other hardware that is uh, uh, getting to the hand of these criminals? So what I, all the money you have been investing, what is the essence of investing that money and what result has it been providing for you? So if it is not providing for you uh, anything for you, it means you are not serious. It means we don't have a serious government. It means we don't have a... a, a, a it seems that uh, some of these bandits are even giving ultimatum to Nigerian states uh, of 24 hours or a number of days. We have had a lot of clips, video clips and audio clips, where parents of these children, of the people, parents and families of those who were kidnapped, were given opportunity. We have had uh, also a situation whereby a bandit in Kabul State uh, who kidnapped the children, uh, the student of uh, uh, this school, uh, Greenfield, had given a, 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 an ultimatum to Nigerian State. We have had given a global delay in the forest of Bimungwari. Around Niger State, where that is Kaduna and Niger State, or in between Kaduna and Niger and Kepi State, have given ultimate to Nigerian State. So, if you have someone in the forest that you cannot challenge, that you cannot arrest, that you cannot apprehend, I wonder 
uh, is Nigeria really a sovereign state? If it is a sovereign state, do we really have a leadership? There is no serious government that would allow what is happening in Nigeria to continue to happen. We are still advocating that there must be a synchronized system whereby there is collaboration between the security formation, the government and the local operators. So you have to use a local strategy to address the local issues. Okay, Mr. Getso. Yes, I, I do agree. We need local solutions for these local problems. But I need to ask you, as a security expert, could you kindly tell me what does it take to shoot down an aircraft, especially a military aircraft that the army uses to bombard terrorist settlement? And um, I'm tying this to the capabilities of the bandits as to how these Boko Haram terrorists, that we don't even know their financiers, how they're able to shoot down a fighter jet of the Nigerian no, no, army. No, don't tell me that they know. We don't know their financiers. The Minister of Information made mention in the session that they know who are the financiers of the criminals in all parts of the country. So I wonder why, if you continue to tell me that we don't know the financiers, I think you are making a wrong statement and I disagree with you based on the statement from the authority. My oh, government oh. has made mention that they know the finances, they know who are doing that what, and even Muhammad Mala Muhammad Buhari, before he comes to the government, he made mention such assertion against the government of the uh, former president, that is the of Jonathan. That the government must know, must have hand in any criminality. Okay, Miss Mr. Getso. Mr. Getso, yes. Yes, indeed, the government has said they know their finances and they keep making statements that they are going to publish a list of names that they never do. But could we focus on the, the, the point here, which is how is a Boko Haram terrorist group able to shoot down you know fighter jets of the Nigerian military? Uh, it is because our, we are not using, utilizing in our intelligence for decision making. If we are using our intelligence for decision making, I made mention an assertion or uh, an, an, an information on, on media, on local and international media, uh, when I got the information that uh, these guys, that was sometimes uh, during the uh, 20, uh, 2018, 2019 or thereby, uh, uh, when I made mention that uh, there are informations around Nigeria that these guys are going to obtain or to receive an A, that is anti-aircraft uh, uh, um, uh, design. Uh, so if at all government then we are serious, we have, I have provided narrative information on the media through local and international media for about three weeks, providing information on the strategies being used, providing information on the uh, how money is being transported for this purpose. Yeah. And also I provided, later I provided also information that additional money is being collected for the bandits around the Binyungwari area in Kaduna State and the uh, uh, police, uh, that is uh, Jomo uh, within the areas of uh, Binyungwari, uh, Dandui and um, Kagara, that is Niger, uh, as well as the uh, part of the uh, um, uh, Bena area of Kebbi uh, uh, State, uh, local government area of Kebbi State. I have made mention that these guys are working towards obtaining a link. And uh, I have made mention them that I have access information, uh, uh, I have access information through intelligence, and uh, we are very much ready and ready to provide those information so that those who are responsible for collecting the money, transporting the money, okay. moving the money from Nigeria to other neighboring states, and where the money is going to go through can be apprehended. But nobody yes, Mr. Getso, that, 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 that I believe is a fantastic response, you know, making sure that you share the information that you have to make sure that, you know, those people, those criminals and criminal herders are persecuted. Mr. Yahuza Getso, security experts, we appreciate your opinion every day. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a great pleasure. Okay, so we'll take a break here to join our guests who are standing by to help us analyze that security situation that occurred in Plateau State over the weekend.